Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you are new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to Do You Trust Allah? So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaking about a very important matter which is a tawakkul ala Allah he said if you were placing your trust in Allah in the manner that Allah deserves to be trusted then he would give you rizq he would provide for you as he provides for the birds they go out in the morning empty <coughs> with empty stomachs and they return with their bellies full of food so the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in the Quran mention the subject of making a tawakkul ala Allah putting one's trust in Allah and this is essential. Allah repeats it many times over again. How the believers must put their trust in Allah. He even makes it a condition that if you are believers, then you should be putting your trust in Allah. So we should understand what it means and how we might implement it. One of the things that we understand from making a tawakkul ala Allah is that whatever it is that we are going to be given in this life, whatever risk we receive, we will receive it regardless. There's a saying of the Prophet Sallallahu a soul will not die until it has received all of the rizq which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has written for it. And we know that we can put our trust in Allah because whatever it is that we do receive in this dunya of provisions, it is already written for us. Nothing can increase it and nothing can decrease it. You will not die until you receive that provision which Allah has written for you. Also, we understand from our deen that nothing can happen to you, neither good nor bad, except that which Allah has written for you. Yes, the Prophet ﷺ made that clear. If the whole nation, meaning the whole world, gathered together to benefit you in something, they would not benefit you except in something that Allah had already determined for you. This is the Qudra of Allah. And if the whole world were to gather to, together to harm you in something, they would not harm you except in something which Allah had already written for you. The way the scholars have said it, in a beautiful saying, what Allah has willed to be is, and what Allah has not willed to be never was, and never will be. SubhanAllah. So again, we know that Allah is truly deserving to be Al-Wakil, the one upon whom we put our trust. But placing our trust in Allah has certain conditions. First of all, one must be a believer in order for Allah to give him his protection and his help, the nusra of Allah. Then one must be a believer. And one in be being a believer must not commit any form of shirk. In fact, when the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the 70,000 who were to enter Jannah without hisab at all, without any punishment or any accounting, he mentioned that there are people who do not can mention three forms of shirk which existed at the time. He said they don't do these things, and these are the characteristics of those people. They place their trust in Allah. So one must be a believer, not committing any form of shirk in Allah. One must be striving to do his or her best as a believer. Nobody is perfect. We all fall short. We all have habits. We all have sins. None of us is perfect. And so one might allow the shaitan to whisper in one's ear and say, Oh, you know, how can you put your trust in Allah? How, how are you sure that Allah will protect you and take care of you when you do X, Y, and Z? But the point is that, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does help us and He forgives us as well, as long as we are trying our best. And the third thing is that one must be striving for the sake of Allah. The help of Allah, the protection of Allah, comes when we strive 
to do that which Allah has commanded us to do, we strive for the sake of Islam. The Prophet وسلم, his whole striving was to establish Islam. It is now our job to continue standing for Islam, yes? Striving in everything that you do to pass on the message, to be a good example, to teach your children, to right the things that are wrong in a society by any means. And Allah has warned us, again in the Qur'an, Allah has even warned us that if your properties and your families and your wealth and the things that you enjoy of this dunya are dearer to you than striving in the path of Allah, then wait. Allah will be displeased with you. Wait for the anger of Allah, for the punishment of Allah. So with regard to this concept, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ He who fears Allah, who guards himself against the displeasure of Allah, Allah makes for him a way out of every difficulty. وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ And he gives him rizq from a place that he did not expect. Here is a Muslim who is on the path of Islam, the best that he can, trying the best that he or she can, not to fear the circumstances that he is in, but to strive for the sake of Allah and to stand for Islam and to establish the truth of Islam, the message of Islam. And he may not even think that he's going to be safe or secure. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes for him a way out of difficulties and provides for him from some place that he had no idea whatsoever would come. This is a promise from Allah. وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ And he who puts his trust in Allah, moving forward, pushing forward that which we must put, striving for that we, which we must strive for as Muslims to establish the deen on this earth, even if the situation, the circumstances seem to be against him, then Allah is enough for him. فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغُ أَمْرِهِ قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدْرًا Here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that Allah is fulfilling that which He has determined. You can either be a part of it or sit off on the side and not be a part of it. You know the Muslims, they were facing tremendous odds. And yet they were not fearful. And yet they did not flinch whatsoever. Because they understood Allah is carrying out His will. They were just tools that Allah was using. Something much greater than them was moving. So Islam will be successful in this earth. And you can either be a part of it or be a loser and be out of it. But whoever puts his trust in Allah, then he is enough for him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises those Muslims in the time of the Prophet sallallahu when they were faced with such odds, against such odds, and they were striving to establish Islam. You know, every time they would be in a situation where they thought, oh, this is the end. This is the end, we're going to be destroyed. But they stood firmly and they put their trust in Allah. And the end result was always better for Islam. You may say something to someone that you think might upset them. But in fact, when you represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even no matter how weak you are as a Muslim, you stand for the truth and you speak the truth, you'll find the end result will always be good. Just like in the Battle of Badr when the Muslims were outnumbered. And the Prophet ﷺ picked up a handful of dirt, dust, and he threw it at the unbelievers. But we have chosen not to be a part of it these days. We have chosen to be weak, to love the dunya, to not mention to people that we are Muslims even. We're so afraid of them to that degree. And some of us even have gone so far as to change something which Allah has made haram into something halal in order to please the non-Muslims. This is the utter weakness and the very opposite of التوكل على الله. And Allah tells the believers, فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ If you've determined this is the right thing to do, then put your trust in Allah. وَإِنَّ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ Allah loves those who put their trust in Him. They move forward, they put their trust in Him, no matter the circumstances. And when Allah loves you, then His help is with you. إِنْ يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهِ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ if Allah helps you, then nobody can defeat you. If Allah is on your side, no one can defeat you. وَإِنْ يَخْذُلْكُمْ فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْصُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ And if He causes you to fail and to be weak, if Allah is displeased with you, as He is displeased with us, He must be displeased with our Ummah, because look at what is happening to us. 
Then who is going to be able to help you other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And then this is the command that he ends this ayah with. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Upon Allah, then the believers must put their trust, if in fact they are believers. And so in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, when the Muslims were facing such tremendous odds against them, they put their entire trust on Allah. They knew that this was something greater than them. They knew that this was Allah, whose intention was to establish his deen on the earth, something we have forgotten completely now. الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسِ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Those whom, to whom the people said before the battle of Uhud that the people have gathered against you, so fear them, beware, watch out, the people are going to clobber you, they're going to come in and deal with you. فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا The result was it just increased them in their iman. Of course the people are coming after us. That's the next step. That's the next stage. You see how Allah is carrying out His will. This is what Allah and His Messenger have promised us. Yes, of course, we're taken to the next level. And Allah is with us. As He was with us in the beginning, He is with us now. This is the attitude that we are supposed to have as Muslims. فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ That Allah is enough for us. And He is the best upon whom you put your trust. And so we do not fear the people, but we fear Allah. We hold fast by Islam. We are proud of Islam. We don't change things in Islam. We don't say something that Allah has made haram is halal in order to please the people. Allah says that is just the shaitan. And he causes fear by his supporters, by his allies. And the shaitan these days has many allies, yes, among the non-Muslims, among the Muslims, the shaitan has many supporters. People who say things like, oh, you know, this was 14 centuries ago and now we have to change it. Or Muslims who come in, well, they say that they're Muslims, and they violate la ilaha illallah by all kinds of things that they add to the deen or take away from the deen. Muslims who come and want to change Islam, these are also the supporters of the shaitan. These are also the people who say, oh, don't talk about Islam, don't talk about this mas'ala in Islam, because the people think something else. We fear the people, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they change things. That is only the shaitan. He causes you to fear through his supporters, or his supporters try to cause you to fear. Do not fear them, but fear me if in fact you are believers. Well, nowadays, we Muslims have become, you know, so weak, and we try to please the non-Muslims, thinking that in this way, we're somehow going to have peace. But you see, the Muslims all around the world are peaceful, are they not? We Muslims are very peaceful. We are perfectly willing to cooperate with people who are not of our faith, not of our tradition at all. Yes, we understand that there can be cooperation between groups of people who are different from each other. And so here we are being as peaceful and passive as we can. Everywhere, the Muslims are being uh, beaten up. The Muslims are being downtrodden, even worse. And the reason is because we are not proud of Islam. We are not standing for Islam. We are weak. When we are weak like this, shaitan is not going to leave us alone. The shaitan knows that as long as this message exists, as long as anyone is in possession of this Qur'an, this powerful message of the Qur'an, then he's not safe, yes? But there's someone else who's against us, other than the shaitan, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. That if we do not carry this message of Islam, if we are ashamed of it, and if we go hiding it or changing it, to please the Muslims, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be displeased with us. When we say, La ilaha illallah, we are entering into a covenant with Allah. Those who know are not equal to those who do not know. We know. We have the message. We have the only message that's going to save mankind. And so if we turn our backs on that message, then we will be just as the warning which Allah is giving us over and over in the Qur'an, using Bani Israel as the example, وَذُرِبَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الذِّلَّةِ وَالْمَسْكَنَةِ وَبَاءُوا بِغَضَبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ 
وإذ أخذنا ميثاق الذين أوتوا الكتاب لتبيننه للناس ولا تكتمونه This is a command of Allah We are all under this command And when we took the covenant with the people of the book With those who were given the book beforehand You will make it clear to people And you will not hide it And so in order for us to make a tawakkur ala Allah We have to understand that this deen of ours is the answer This deen of ours is the truth I mean, look at these people whom we have been taught to respect. They have no guidance whatsoever. Their science, most of it is false. They used to say a few decades ago that when you're angry, it's healthier to let out your anger. Now they come around and they say, oh, no, no. Now they agree with the Prophet They say, no, no, it is better for you to contain your anger. If you're angry, don't let it out. They change their opinions on things every few years. These people don't have any guidance. They don't know where to stop. But we know where to stop. We know what is healthy and what is unhealthy. We know what is halal and what is haram. And that's never going to change. There is no reason for us to doubt what Allah has given us. And there is no reason for us to be ashamed of it. And there is no reason for us to fear people when we tell them what we believe, who we are. Make a tawakkul on Allah. Put your trust in Allah. And the result will always be good for Islam. Akulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. In sa'ir dhunub fa astaghfiruhu innahu kawli ghafur rahim. My question from me to you, do you trust Allah? Do you trust God? I'm asking this because how many of us woke up today complaining? How many of us said, why is this thing happening to me, God, or why is God in this situation? What we're forgetting is, even in bad times, just learn to appreciate God. You woke up, thank God for that. You're with your family, thank God for that. But what I'm trying to say is that, like the video says, God doesn't let you go through something he knows uh, you can't come out from God. The only, it's only God's will that says, you know what? Let Fanny be blessed with this, and it's going to happen. You know what? I don't think Fanny will be blessed with this, or it's going to take Fanny to achieve this. That's all God's plan. He only knows. He's the only one that knows what's going to happen to us tomorrow, and what the world thinks. I mean, shouldn't really be our concern because some people are going to call you names. Some people are going to look down on you because you don't have something. And that's just life. The whole point is to keep faith in God and to trust in God and to trust that things are going to change someday. Not Your situation is not permanent and you could be smiling tomorrow, but despite whatever you're going through, try your best to still smile at the end of the day. We're bigger than whatever we're going through and God is bigger than anyone in this world. So let's not pay attention to worldly things and denying that you belong to certain religion or that you're a spiritual person in general. I mean, that's just upset for what to make our friends feel better. If you have to pray, pray. If you have to go to the mosque, go to the mosque. If you have to go to church, go to church. And don't feel shy about it. Don't feel any other way about it. Let me know what you guys actually think. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.